Well, hey, everybody, it's the middle of the week, Wednesday. Hope you have your Bible and your uh, journal ready to take some notes as we read God's Word. Today, we are in John chapter 17. uh, That is part of our New Testament reading plan. So John chapter 17. Um, This is sometimes referred to as Jesus' high priestly prayer. He's in the upper room with his disciples. He's already instituted the Lord's Supper. And uh, he's been teaching them. Uh, in a few hours, they'll go out to the Garden of Gethsemane. He'll be arrested the following day, crucified. And it's, it's some of the most intimate communication anywhere in the New Testament. And in chapter 17 especially, we, we, we get a glimpse. We get to look in on Jesus praying to the Father. And it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Here he is the evening before he's going to die. And he's praying to the Father. A very intimate look at the relationship between the Son and the Father. And what really speaks to me in this chapter is that he prays for us. He prayed for his disciples. And he prayed for those who would believe in him through his disciples and in the generations, i.e. centuries, millennia to follow. So this evening, before Jesus is arrested and crucified, he's praying for you. and He's praying for me. He's praying for all of us who are going to be his followers, his believers. And what does he pray? What does he ask for when he prays for me and when he prays for you? Well, look at verse 15. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. When, when Jesus prays, he doesn't pray that when you get saved, you automatically are transported to heaven. God removes you from this world. No, we're going, we stay here, okay? We're salt and light. And to be salt and light, we have to be in the world. But he prays that the Father would keep us from the evil one, that Satan is not able to touch us, to defeat us, to destroy us. He prays for our spiritual well-being, if you will. Look at verse 17. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. To sanctify something means not only is it pure and holy, but it means it's set apart and dedicated to God and his service. And he says, we are to be sanctified, set apart and dedicated in truth. And what is truth? His word. That God's word is to do a work in our lives that transforms us and makes us the kind of people who are different because of the work of his word in us, we are set apart and dedicated to God to serve him and to be useful in his ministry, in his kingdom. And Jesus prayed that we would be sanctified to the service of God through his word. One of the reasons I'm so thankful for our D group ministry we talked about yesterday for this New Testament reading plan for you, reading the New Testament with us, writing in your journal and watching these videos is the way God uses that to sanctify you for his kingdom. So keep doing it. Keep it up. It's good. Also, in verses 21 and 22, he's praying that uh, that they may all be one in verse 21, even as you, Father, and are, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us so that, so that the world may believe that you sent me. Then verse 22, the glory which you have given me, I have given to them that they may be one just as we are one. He, he prayed for us to get along, to, get, to, to, to like each other, love each other, to be unified. You know, whenever a church has conflict, it dishonors Jesus. Whenever Christians fall out with each other, it dishonors Jesus. He prayed that we would be people who would care about each other, who would get along, who would love one another, who, who would be united, who would be one. Um, uh, and, you know, and, and in today's world in America today, as divided as we are, it breaks the heart of God when these cultural things, these political things, all this tension in our country comes into the church. And because we disagree on policy issues or who to vote for, whatever it happens to be, we do this with each other. God never smiles on anyone who does that. That's one of the things Jesus prayed about here. Um, And actually, he said in verse 23, I in them and you in me, this is part of his prayer now, praying for us, I in them and you in me, that they may, notice this, that they may be perfected in unity. 
One of the ways God perfects or matures us is in our ability to learn how to get along with other believers. And if you're somebody who is contentious all the time, then you're not maturing the way you think you are or the way you should. Part of the evidence of maturing is getting along with people, knowing how to have relationships that are healthy and constructive. And then in verse 24, he prayed, Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am, talking about heaven, so that they may see my glory, which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world, before the world ever was created. By the way, that points to the deity and the eternal nature of Jesus Christ. He didn't begin at Bethlehem. He simply became human at Bethlehem. It's the incarnation. But he prayed here the evening before his arrest, that we would get to see his glory in heaven. Jesus wants us to be with him, and he wants us to see all the glory that is his. Did you notice something? In all of these things that Jesus prayed about when he prayed for us, he prayed for our spiritual well-being, our spiritual maturity, our spiritual growth, our spiritual health. Um, You know, I think sometimes we pray for everything when it comes to other believers except that. And we need to pray for everything. But brothers and sisters, to pray for people to get a job, as important as that is. To pray for people to be healed from disease, as important as that is. And never pray for people's walk with Jesus Christ, for their spiritual maturity, their their unity, their love, to pray for their growth. is short-sighted. Um... Because we only need jobs in this life. We only need this body in this life. But our spiritual health has eternal consequences. Pray for one another. But in addition to the things we normally pray for, learn to pray for each other in the way Jesus did. For these spiritual miracles. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.